everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Passive Income Through Multifamily Real Estate Podcast. I'm your co-host, Lolita, also joined by Kyle. On the show with us today, we have Chad Hudson. Chad, thanks so much for being here with us. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Chad is the owner and founder of Savoy Companies, which specializes in buying, selling, building, remodeling, and owner financing real estate since 2000. As a sole owner of Savoy, Chad has over 100 transactions and held over 40 rental properties. Chad has also been involved in several syndications as an investor, currently holding 2,047 units worth over $158 million and now as a general partner raising capital. So we're eager to get into today's interview and find out how you've achieved that very impressive portfolio. So with that being said, Chad, could you please tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you currently do? Sure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, Kind of grew up a farm boy, East Texas, and and was fortunate to go to Texas A&M University on a baseball scholarship um, in College Station, Texas. So um, very fortunate with that aspect of getting out of college debt-free and and really... um, kind of finding out early on what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to be in real estate in some capacity as far as real estate investing goes, but uh, was fortunate enough to, to start at an early age. And, and, you know, it seems like yesterday it's a cliche, but time really just flies by and you, uh, you look up and, and it's been 18, 19 years later. So the different chapters along the journey has been pretty special. I, I met my wife in college we ended up getting married after she finished law school, but we built this together. I was, uh, you know, I, I had several mentors that I looked up to that I asked a lot of questions to, and and every one of them said generally the same thing. If you're going to take a risk, take it at an early age, and that's what I did. So, you know, I dove all in and, and really tried to learn every aspect of real estate, not only just real estate, but real estate investing and where we should put our money. And and so I've, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to do every aspect from the development side to building to, uh, to have uh, investments and rentals and becoming a landlord and property management. And, and I knew what I liked, knew what I was good at and found a couple of niches that really uh, I could succeed in locally. And, um, you know, it's uh, again, 18 years later, here we are. We, um, we've uh, kind of started and small and grew organically and then, um, here we are with, you know, the impressive numbers you just mentioned. Sometimes I have to pinch myself and, you know, um, every time you set a goal, you you accomplish a goal, you, you, you try to do a larger goal. And when I hear that number, it's, uh, you know, it's satisfying, but then I I look back and look at my original goal of 10,000 units. I still got a lot of work to do. Awesome. awesome. So uh, I'll say it again, 2047 units over 158 million. That really is amazing. And for people that are just starting out, those numbers probably seem pretty intimidating. So I, I think you mentioned 18 years. Did you, did it take 18 years to build up to that size or, you know, was the first couple of years just educating yourself and smaller, smaller properties that maybe you've disposed of now? How long did it take you to get that to that 2000 plus number? Great question. You know, it, it took all 18 years. And as far as to get to that number, it didn't, but it took 18 years to self-educate, learn, and, and really, really carve out my niche. And, and, and honestly, niche change, you know, niches, they change and, and in your goals change, like I mentioned, but um, early on, I wanted a hundred doors and I wanted to self-manage them. And, you know, when you're young and your ego's so big and the first chapter of your life is really all you have is your spouse and that's it. Um, you've got a lot of time and, and we both had jobs. We both worked our butts off and, and, um, when the kids, you know, when we started a family, I started really, really diving into my time and realizing that, you know, I, I had no problem being a landlord. Uh, I had no problem meeting and showing and, and, um, and analyzing deals. I just, uh, I, I had to, uh, really self-evaluate and realize, okay, there's much more smarter people than me. You know, I need to really educate myself on how to scale. And I'm sure you guys have had, um, you know, people on your podcast that have similar stories that I really, after peeling the onion back, realized I couldn't do this alone. So what happened was after I got to 44 units and started a family, I started selling off some of my assets and really, really 
uh, having some really good meetings with some, um, you know, like-minded folks, but smarter as far as uh, they, they were in the multifamily space. Now, I was in the multifamily space just on a smaller scale with triplexes, duplexes, quads, you, um, five plexes. Um, so what happened was I started selling off a lot of units and investing passively in syndications and apartments. And um, I felt like my resume was just as good as most of the sponsors. I just needed to invest with the right sponsors, invest with the sponsors that I could learn from, and then, um, and then start asking the right questions. So that's kind of how we grew organically. We ended up selling off every door um, all along while we were still working and, and, um, and I was still building homes, still do to this day, Savoy Builders. And, and so with that said, that's how we grew and got to the, the, the number we, we, are, we are at currently with the apartments. I still have one fiveplex that I self-manage and it's, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope. Once I started selling off the units and having this team, so to speak, and it's a team sport, you know that Kyle, it's, um, it is, uh, it was self gratitude for me to not really have to deal with the tenants and having a property manager involved, having an asset manager involved, and and really learning that trade, I, I picked up on it pretty quick. But I wouldn't trade it. Uh, those, I, I, so to answer your original question, about four years ago is when I started investing passively, and then and then started uh, becoming some uh, a general partners, raising capital on some deals. Okay, perfect. And then out of those two those two thousand units, and are most of those passive? I would say half of them are passive, yes. Okay, cool. And so how much time are you spending managing and working on those thousand compared to the other thousand that you were kind of active with? Um, same amount, just because as a passive, sometimes you do more due diligence as a passive. But, um, you know, I'd say 20 hours a week. I, uh, I, but I love it. You know, this is my passion. This is what I do. And I've tried to craft my passion and perfect it and and I work at it so um, you know there's long weeks I love it and, and as far as time 20 hours a week and, and I'm, I'm diving into every deal I mean every deal that I put money into whether it's passively or or, or with the general partnership side I, I never would ask somebody to invest with me or this particular deal uh, unless I invested it's hard for me that, that was a a similar question I had when I was passing, how much money are you putting in a deal? And if they'd say no, I'd really, really, really hesitate on that particular deal. Okay. And how many different deals are you in total between those 2000 units? Would you say? I would say we are at, um, I'm probably in 11 deals right now. We've got two that, that I'm, um, I'm about to invest. I am, I am currently investing passively with one that's closing within the next two weeks. And then I have two deals that I am uh, raising capital for as we speak. Okay. And are those, uh, are you focused mainly in Texas where you live or is it kind of spread out all over the U S what markets are you focused in? No, sir. We're, we're, I'm, I'm just like anybody else as far as analyzing a deal. I, I'm, I'm real big on the Southeast. I live in Texas. Uh, but you know, there's, there's different markets just because you hear of a, a down market in one area, that doesn't mean it's, it's the same in Atlanta, Georgia. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm all over the Southeast. Um, I'm not afraid of the Southeast. I, I believe in, I believe in it and obviously invest in it. So. Awesome. Is there a market kind of that you're hot on one particular market um, that you're particularly interested in? I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, the Southeast is real, really, piques my interest. I like Memphis. I like Atlanta. I love Texas. It gets a little hot right now for me. I'm, I'm in San Antonio. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're currently looking at a deal in, in college station, Texas. And so, you know, we're, we're, uh, I'm not afraid, like I said, of the Southeast, it's got so much growth potential. And I look at the same things. Mostly everybody on your show does. And I look at job growth. I look at you know, crime rate demographic, more, more so job, so to speak, and who's moving there. If, if I see population growth, then, you know, that's a big, big turn on for me. Okay. And are all your assets multifamily or are you in a couple different asset classes? 
Um, I am, uh, I'm, I'm heavily in multifamily here locally. I'm in a couple of commercial projects and then, you know, like I said, I'll, I've got some stuff that I do on my own that I self manage that I've had that I haven't sold. And then, um, I've, I grew up doing the fix and flip and before, you know, the TV shows and it got hot. So again, locally on a smaller scale, if I see something with meat on the bone, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm well versed to, to go in and capture it. If, if, if it's, it looks sexy enough. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So after working with multiple sponsors, you're in about 11 or 12 deals. I'm sure there's some tools reporting or best practices that some of these sponsors do that maybe you like versus another one. Is there anything that sticks out that you like um, over someone else as far as the reporting that you see on a monthly or quarterly basis? You know, all of them are pretty buttoned up. There was some that I didn't invest with because I didn't feel comfortable with. But, uh, you know, it's a small space. So mostly everybody knows everybody. And then and, and if you do, you know, if you don't do the right thing, you're not going to be around wrong, for a long time. So, um, you know, they're, all of their PPMs, all of their recordings are fantastic. Um, all of their their, you know, communication and and skill set is is fantastic. Um, you know, transparency is key. You know, I, there's certain questions I ask up front, but a lot of these guys that I'm going with or girls um, are, are I'm, I'm too second time with them as far as investing passively. So, you know, there's a couple I like. Of course, the ones that are letting me be a part of the journey a little bit closer and let me raise capital. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, really fortunate and, and, and blessed for them to, to let me be a part of their team and, and do that and learn. Um, again, like I said, it's a team sport. I didn't come in. I didn't feel like I was a burden. I feel like I could offer a great amount of um, a skill set as well. Awesome. And so do you suggest working with multiple sponsors or just sticking to maybe one or two? I've talked to multiple different people and, and they all have a different opinion. Um, what's yours? Um, you know, early on, I'm, I mean, it, it's your comfort level. I, I asked and, and I knew the right questions to ask. You know, I, I I felt like if they've ever been in prison, I'm out. I'm not going to invest with them. And if they've ever, ever walked on a deal. So, um, you know, I'm pretty confident to ask the right questions. And, and if they do not give you the right answers or do not answer at all, then I would say run. But I have no problem with um, investing in, in multiple sponsors. Like I said, there's a couple that that I race for, that I really like, that I'm rooting for. And, um, but the, but then again, um, you know, there is, there's some good, good sponsors out there that you can hit your wagon to passively and, and really, really be successful as far as a passive investor. So, you know, it's really a personal preference. Once you find one, I don't want, you, I wouldn't recommend just stopping at one. I would recommend really networking like I've done and meeting all of them, meeting as many as you can. And then who knows, you know, you, the sky's the limit as far as that term, as far as you, you might learn something different from that particular um, sponsor. And for those out there who kind of want to do what you're doing, invest passively first and then starting to become a part of the general partnership, what do those conversations look like with the sponsors and how did you finally get to someone that, you know, allowed you to come on board and kind of peek behind the curtain? Well, again, it, I feel like the previous, you know, 18 years or 14 at the time before I started asking to be a part of their deal, I felt like prepared me, Kyle. And it was, uh, you know, so again, I can't answer for somebody just starting and wanting to jump into the multifamily space. It, it, if somebody called me off the street and had zero experience, it would, you know, it'd be hard for me to devote some time to them. But um, I have no problem with someone I tell people to, to go buy a smaller unit, go buy a plex to see if this is really what you want to do. And you can't get hurt on a, on a duplex if you do the numbers and do it right. And then, and really learn and learn how to do everything. Learn how to, how to obviously look at a tenant, look at, you know, their, their credit and the whole nine yards of from, uh, you know, from a rehab to down to collecting rent and or not collecting rent. And that's in that, you know, so to speak, but I, I think you should, you need to really, really dive in on education first, learn what you're doing before you, 
get out there and start asking, you know, the, the superiors of being a part of their project. Cause they, they put in the work, they have, they've put in the long hours and, and they're going to share, they're going to share their thoughts and share their rewards with people that they figure, figure that could help them and be a benefit for their, for their tool belt. So. Yeah. You know. Awesome. So talk a little bit more about why you made the decision to go from passive to active, obviously active, you're working a little bit more on the deals, maybe, you know, finding capital, all that kind of stuff when passively you can just sit back and collect that mailbox money. So there's something there about being an active GP that interests you. What is it? Well, it was more so to speak of the, the, the longevity of my career and people asking me locally here um, if they could invest with me. And, um, you know, I didn't need their money on, on the building side of um, my construction company, uh, Savoy Builders. I, I had what I needed. I knew what I wanted to do and I knew the limitations as far as how many I wanted to build. So I never took anyone's money and then, and I never took anyone's money on my wife and I investing. We, we had a couple of banks, one in particular that, that, um, again, a relationship base. It took me a while to build, but um, I got a great line of credit with them and never really had to go through the, after the fact, never had to go through all the lending headaches. I could just go out and buy what I wanted and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, I, I started getting the phone calls about, Hey, where can I put my money? And I, I had a pretty good Rolodex of people. And so I, I started, you know, they, they knew what I was doing and they asked if they could be a part of it. So, um, I would say the um, the aspect, I think it's a pretty good um, niche to be good at as far as raising capital. It, sound, it sounded at the time like it was needed and I had been asked several times and then finally I felt like I liked this one in particular sponsor that, that I knew would take care of me and, and I could obviously Kyle learn like I mentioned from them and, and let me peek behind the curtains. So, you know, it wasn't a real big time restraint. I, I still vetted the deal. I still uh, stress tested on my on my side. I knew their stress test ability, and I liked the deal. I liked the loan. I liked the the lending side. I liked the location. So, I, I knew I liked that in order for me to invest passively. But I needed to like it in order for me to go sell myself and and, and raise capital. So. I mean, I, my first deal, I raised a half a million bucks. I raised it in my sleep, but that was easy to me because I created that, that Rolodex of people and trust over the years. So, um, you know, I, I, I like, I like doing it. So I'll continue to do it as long as it makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. And you know, that's why I love real estate. There's so many different ways that you can get involved in real estate, whether it's from a passive or active side, there's so many different slices of the pie. So um, and it sounds like you found yours. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Lolita is going to take us into our final four questions. Are you ready? Sure. All right, Chad, what is the one tool that you use in real estate investing that you could not do without? Wow. Great question. Um, one tool I would say is, you know, it took years for me to build, but I would say, uh, for delegation purposes, it, it's, uh, it's my team, you know, it's my, my colleagues, it's my family, it's my kids, it's my friends, you know, it's commercial lenders, brokers, realtors. Um, you know, it, it's, it's all about building relationships in, in, in any industry, whatever you decide to do. So I would say my tool and my success rate has become from doing the right things and, and doing what I say I'm going to do and just really developing a relationship with everybody I do business with. So, you know, I, I would say it's, it's, it's my team. Perfect. Can you tell us a story about your biggest mistake in real estate investing so far and the main takeaway for our listeners? Sure. I, uh, you know, I'm at a point to really learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, you know, one of my mentors told me that he said, look, you know, there's a lot of, there's a sample size out there of a ton of mistakes, try to learn from other people. So, um, you know, but I've made my share. I, I, I've uh, avoided market signs and, and, and lost some money, nothing devastating. I, I think it's important to have a rainy day fund. And, um, but, um, you know, you gotta be careful with, with who you choose as far as a partnership. I, uh, 
I, I know that the multifamily space, the larger scale space is a, is a big partnership play. You have to be involved in a partnership, but you know, I would say be very careful who you partner with, make sure the, and this is coming from experience, make sure that your, um, you know, your goals are aligned, make sure your work ethic is aligned and, um, make sure your values are aligned and the way you treat people and the way you pay your bills and make sure you pay people. Uh, but if you get in the wrong partnership, it could be bloody and, and, and a mess to get out of. Uh, fortunately, um, I've got a great partner in my wife and she, she, uh, she not only stress tests this, uh, deals, but she helps me stress test partnerships as well. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with that. So great advice. Uh, what is it that you need to do now to grow your life to the next level? Hmm. <laughs> Boy, uh, you know, I, I strive to get better every day. I'm not a, um, uh, a saint by any means. And I think, uh, we all need to have a moral compass and, and our, you know, our, our, uh, we just need to grow as people, but I would say consistency. I, I'm, I'm pretty organized and I like to stay consistent. I don't like surprises. So, you know, early on I've learned to say no to a lot of the bullshit out there. There's so much minutia and you can get involved in. And, and I tell people, especially younger people, um, you know, that it's okay to miss out on a few things. It's okay to miss out on a few fun things. If, if your true goal is to be financially free and invest in real estate or invest in yourself. So, um, I spent a lot of time saying, no, if, if, if it does not make sense for me or my family or my, my Savoy, then, um, then I'll, I'll say no. So I, I think consistency and, and learning to say no, you know, I'm a real estate guy. I'm a deal finder. I like to hustle. I like to make it happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm a simpleton. I like simplistic and, and I try not to crowd myself with, with a bunch of, uh, like I said earlier, sorry for dropping the, the language there. But <laughs> Again. And finally, where can people find out more about you, Chad? Um, SavoyCompanies.com, S-A-V-O-Y-C-O-M-P-A-N-I-E-S.com, and uh, of course, chat at SavoyCompanies.com. I'm heavily involved on LinkedIn. I say heavily involved. I don't, I don't, I don't put a lot of content out there, but I'm on there. I think it's a great site, and and I'm uh, I'm on Instagram now, so um, uh, it, I'm I'm getting out there. But I need to get on Instagram for locally for my uh my custom home company and and uh, so i'm on instagram at chad j hudson c-h-a-d-j as in joseph h-u-d-s-o-n and linkedin is at chad j hudson as well awesome we'll make sure to put everything in the show notes so very great i love your story i can hear and feel the passion in your voice and it's very inspiring so definitely relatable and i'm sure piqued the interest of our listeners so thanks so much for that great interview chad Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys for having me and love your show. I appreciate what you guys do as well. And I say this on every podcast. I wish these were out there when I was 24 years old. You know, I, I uh, but I, I, to me, there's no excuse for these kids not learning now with all the information at their fingertips. You just, you got to hustle though. Yep. Thanks for having me. More. Thanks, Absolutely. Chad. Thanks, Chad.